Um, I think we can get started. Uh, I'm just going to give a brief introduction. My name is Jason Petticone. I'm the president and co-founder of the Institute, and I am delighted to be introducing um, our speakers today, who are two good friends and collaborators, Aminata Hughes and Ann Patty. Um, so uh, they're going to be talking about Paideia's outreach work, which um, primarily consists of an amazing program uh, called Teaching Literacy with Latin, uh, and a curriculum known as ICORA. Um, this program got started, as I'm sure Ami will hear, uh, Ami will tell you um, during the during the presentation at a uh, at an after school program in Brooklyn, which I was introduced to in 2014 by Anne. And I hope I'm not stealing your thunder. Can I give the etymology of uh, of ICORA? Ami, or is that? Yes, yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right. So this place was called Still Waters in a Storm. It's an amazing after-school program serving um, mostly um, Latino immigrants, um, and uh, went, and 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 the founder uh, Stephen Half, who I'm not sure if Stephen could attend today, but uh, he's been a, a a good friend for a while as well. Uh, he called it Still Waters in a Storm to sort of denote the just sort of safe space he made for these kids to do their homework after school. And we wanted to translate that into Latin, still waters. And so we called it Icora. So for those of you who know Latin, that's, uh, that's where the name comes from. And so I'm thankful to Anne and, um, and, and Ami for that introduction, uh, which has given, given birth to this amazing, amazing program. So uh, just a, a very, brief bio of, uh, of, of Ami and, and Anne. So uh, Ami is our, is our outreach manager. She has a BA in history uh, with a focus in classical civilizations from uh, St. Peter's University. And she is running the entire outreach operation at Paideia, which she's gonna tell you a lot more about in a minute. Um, and Anne Patty is a uh, retired uh, book editor um, who uh, has discovered all sorts of brilliant writers uh, and is responsible for bringing many famous mm. books uh, into the world, in including books like What's Eating Gilbert Grape and Life of Pi. Um, and uh, after she retired from uh, her editorial work, she also authored a book herself, which is called Living with a Dead Language, which is about her uh, exploits teaching Latin um, and learning Latin herself um, uh, sort of during her retirement. So um, there are a few others involved in the program as well who Ami will introduce, but that is my uh, introductory spiel. And I thank you all for being here. And I'm gonna turn it over to you, Ami. All right, hello. Thank you, uh, Jason, for the glowing introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Ami Hughes. I'm the outreach manager. Um, here at the Paideia Institute, um, and I will be your host for this evening, um, this evening, this afternoon, oh my gosh. Um, so uh, Jason was kind enough to introduce myself and Ann Patty. Um, I also wanted to introduce our student speakers um, and have them say maybe a little bit about themselves. Um, so the first uh, volunteer that we have is uh, Abigail Monasabian, who is a rising senior. Oh. Junior. Junior, I'm a rising junior. Yeah. Perfect, yes. And she is the one of the uh, coordinators at uh, the Great Neck Library site here in New York. Um, would you like to say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so um, I'm a rising junior and um, my school just actually ended yesterday. And I um, host a course site at my local library and um, I'm starting one at my local middle school as well. And just a little bit about me. Um, so for Icora, I run um, like this site at my library, but for it, I also like write weekly articles for like, a for like a website that I have for it as well. And then like, just like delving into like my passion for classics, I also co-founded um, like, it's called the Paul Review. 
and it's um, a journal publication for students who want to bridge like the gap between like the ancient classical world and modern day politics. So like that's just like kind of things that I like like to do outside of Icora. And then I also like interning on political campaigns. And I also have a nonprofit called Books Defy Borders, which sends um, which sends children's books to the underprivileged youth of Iran. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, and our other uh, coordinator is a um, is running two sites uh, through at uh, in the city of Baton Rouge. One is at um, his school, the Durham School, and the other is at the South uh, Baton Rouge Presbyterian Church. Um, and uh, the second coordinator's name is Wade Herod. He is a rising junior as well. Perfect. And go yes, ahead. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, um, hi everyone. Um, my name is Wade Harriet. Um, I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, so way down south. Um, I have started two um I core sites in my community, South Baton Rouge Presbyterian Church, um, and the Dunham School. Um, so I really just like to talk about like why I started these. I started these sites because I've been seeing an increasing lack of emphasis on classics and Latin education in my community as a whole. So in order to kind of supplement that and kind of tackle that head on, um, I've like worked with the Pied Institute to found these ICORA sites. And it's been really great just seeing the effect it's had on like inspiring kids to pursue classics and like kind of introducing them to like a field of studies that they may not um, have access to like in their own schools. And um, just a little bit about me. Um, so I am a rising junior. Um, I finished school a little while ago. Um, I like to play tennis. I'm a varsity tennis player. Um, I also I also have my own nonprofit. Um, it's called The Saving Stick. It's an anti-suicide initiative that um, helps people in my community cope with the effects of it and um, kind of tackle it head on. So that's just a little bit about me. Wonderful. And um, you can see like we get lots of talented, passionate, um, young, classic students uh, to volunteer. Um, and they will be speaking more about their site specifically and taking questions at the end. All right, so let's get started. Um, so I named this uh, presentation, Teaching Literacy with Latin, Sailing Through Still Waters, um, because you know, as you know, ICORA means still waters. Um, just a little bit of humor. Um, so briefly, before we get into uh, the overview, I just wanted to touch on what it means uh, outreach is here at Paidea. Um, so I uh, run the ICORA Teaching Literacy with Latin program, which I will go into detail about. Um, we also have institutional memberships um, where I work with university classics departments um, to sustain our outreach programs. And we also uh, managed the Rome Prize, uh, which are um, three scholarships awarded to students who go to classical high schools that serve uh, an underserved population. We give them a free tuition, um, stipend, and uh, support during our Living Latin in Rome high school program, as well as um, SAT tutoring and college counseling afterward. Um, so this is just an overview of outreach. Um, so here's the outline of this of today's presentation. We'll be going over the history of ICORA and teaching literacy with Latin, um, an overview of the curriculum. We'll be spotlighting a site or two sites in this case, um, and then we'll have a Q and A uh, and some information about how you guys can get involved. All right. Um, so here's the uh, history of teaching literacy with Latin. Um, first of all. What is ICORA slash teaching literacy with Latin? Um, so ICORA is our flagship after school um, program. Uh, it is 45 minutes to an hour, usually taught by um, high school volunteers, but not always. Um, in fact, you don't really even need Latin to become an ICORA volunteer or teaching literacy with Latin volunteer. Um, we do ask that you have maybe one semester of high school Latin or just some help with pronunciation. And um, it's been uh, held all over the country and all over and in several different uh, uh, countries as of late. Um, 
The other image here is uh, a tree with uh, the root Vok, and it shows you how many um, you know English words we get from this root. Um, and I just wanted to touch on you know why are we doing this? Why Latin? Um, and it's because uh, there it's proven to um, uh, improve literacy outcomes for children. So um, uh, first year Latin instruction improves students. Um, I'm sorry, did, do you guys still see the presentation? Nope. No, okay. Um, sorry, that's, um, we're, that's our fault. Uh, Allegra just uh, accidentally made herself host. We're, uh, we're thinking that there might be a few people waiting in the waiting room who can't get in mm -hmm. and uh, only the host can give them that power. So I think uh, when Allegra switched, uh to you she took your ability to share your screen away so if you okay. do it again it, it, it'll work sorry about that no worries um all right share the sound all right perfect share is everyone good now yeah great 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 okay so um first year latin instruction improves students abilities to read english by 150 percent um and uh they also improve literacy or test scores, um, standardized test scores rather, um, according to the FLES um, Latin program evaluation reports. Um, furthermore, we uh, also encourage uh, cross-cultural connection. Um, so, you know, 80% of Spanish vocabulary comes from Latin. Um, and so we, you know, try to encourage students to make connections. Like if you are, have Spanish as a first language, studying line can help you, you know, connect with both languages. Okay, um, so still waters in a storm. Uh, as Jason kind of touched on earlier, um, uh, the first i slash teaching literacy with Latin site was in Bushwick um, in a one room schoolhouse ran by uh, Stephen Half. Um, and I will kind of pass this uh, portion on to Anne Patty, who um, is was mo monumental in, in founding uh, teaching literacy with Latin. So um, I, uh, Still Waters in the Storm was actually a storefront. And it was run by a, a former teacher named Stephen Half, a really extraordinary man, uh, who from you know after school till about six did homework help. And in about year three um, of his having Stillwaters, he decided to start teaching Latin. I heard about him because he also had well-known writers or sort of well-known writers or both. Um, would come and volunteer and do a little writing program with the kids. So I heard about it because a couple of my writers had done the program and they knew I was learning Latin. I was probably in my third or fourth year, maybe fifth. I started learning Latin when I was 60. So it was like, I can't remember everything. Um, anyway, so I went there and on Wednesdays they did Latin. And I, Stephen greeted me and I was, um, I actually had to read my book to remember what happened. If you ever want to read my book, here it is. There's a, there is a chapter on Stillwaters and Paideia both in it. Um, so, uh, you know, he gave me three girls and a copy of an illustrated children's book called um, Olivia Porca, Olivia the Pig. And basically his way of teaching Latin was to have a children's illustrated book and a dictionary. And that's how we taught Latin. And that's how I did it. That's, you know, so I, I was with three girls, one of whom I stayed in touch with for a long time. And, um, and it was really quite wonderful because they loved it. They loved doing it. And, and I would sometimes explain just a little grammar to it, but we loved talking about the words. So then I went to a Paideia course and I, Jason knew, knows when it was, I don't remember. I don't know how many they'd had before, but it was speaking Latin. So I decided to be a brave person and go. I was probably the worst person there, probably the only non-teacher there. And 
And Jason and I got to talking and I thought, oh my goodness, I have to introduce him to Stephen Half. These guys are gonna, and, and Paideia was pretty young then. Um, so I introduced them. I can't remember if we had lunch or just traded emails or whatever, but I know that at the next, oh, maybe it was, oh, I know what it was. I brought him to the next Paideia thing and he brought three of the kids and the kids, so the kid, three of the kids, and these kids are like 10, 9, 10, 11, attended um, the, uh, the Paideia conference for a day, and it was completely adorable. And Jason then teamed up with Stephen to start Icora, which is a much more complex and sophisticated teaching method. Um, and so it, so the still waters in a storm evolved into Icora. And um, I actually am not on a core teacher, but I do uh, volunteer work. I live upstate and I do volunteer work in the Kingston schools where there's a lot of immigrants. And um, this year I said to the teacher, you know, I like tutoring the kids, but what I'd really like to do is teach them Latin. And so she picked the two brightest ninth graders. <laughs> And um, I used the, uh, the, the uh, Icora textbook and um, we didn't have a lot of time. It only lasted for about six weeks, but uh, it was great. So I still kind of teach Latin and I still am sort of involved in that. And that's about all I have to say. So thank you so much. Um, it's, a, it's a great story. And I'm so glad that you, um, you know, made that connection and helped us establish such a wonderful program and that you're still involved. Um, and yeah, uh, that is uh, our founding story and we're, we're eternally grateful for you, Anne. All right. So um, from Stillwaters, uh, we ended up expanding. Um, we hired um, Jamel Doherty who, uh, helped create the um, curriculum of ICORA. Um, we also partnered with several universities um, and we ended up having sites at uh, in more than 12 states. Um, so we were, business was booming, uh, as they say. Uh, and then 2020 happened. Um, so, you know, things had to shut down. It was a little bit difficult to, um, Access, you know, go in person and um, access schools. However, this presented an opportunity um, in that we started uh, offering a virtual option for iCora. Um, so our online sites flourished and um, there was a new way for people to learn Latin. Um, I brought, was brought on in 2021 and uh, I call this kind of portion uh, our rebirth slash going global. Um, we're slowly rebuilding sites with um, purpose. Um, I'm more hands-on. I'm, you know, trying to get to the nitty gritty of the day to day. Um, we currently have about 25 sites, um, including one in, um, in the UK. And so this is actually a picture of um, students at uh, Undle Primary School in uh, the UK, one of our sites, uh, and they, are holding up trophies uh, from uh, the end of their ICORA semester. Um, we've also had, we also have a summer um, program that allows uh, students to apply for um, $100 grants. And so through that, we've had um, ICORA sites in China and South Korea. So truly we've started in Bushwick and now we are global. All right. Um, Moving on to the curriculum overview. Um, so each uh, site is provided um, materials, including um, a student textbook, teacher's manual, and um, songbook and game appendix. And they also have access to our online resources. So I'm gonna go through uh, each one of those. So. Uh, Jamel Doherty, who I mentioned earlier, uh, led the creation of the textbook. Um, there's 11 units and they're broken into three lessons each. So you can see um, the first lesson 
is uh, grammatic, uh, all about grammar, and um, it includes these uh, vocabulary lists. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we try to build connections between languages. So as you can see, there's a Latin portion, there's Spanish, and there's English to make it easy to uh, make those connections. Um, the second lesson in, in uh, each unit is on um, Roman culture. Uh, so uh, this one is about food. We have some about gladiators. Um, we've got some about, you know, what would you do at the forum, uh, things like that. And the third lesson is about mythology. Um, and so another thing that I wanted to mention is that the um, there's no, no strict rule that every student has to go through the textbook as designed. Um, we allow our, um, our site coordinators to have as much freedom and flexibility in um, teaching their lessons. Uh, so if you had a particularly interested group of students who were like, I just wanna do mythology, uh, you know, we've had volunteers who just focus on mythology with their students. Um, yeah. So the teacher's manual is also uh, fairly straightforward and easy to understand. And here we have a volunteer from one of Waits um, sites and they're they're doing an activity. <laughs> so there's a warm up, a lesson and an activity. Um, the warm up is usually a, sh a short game. So for example, in this um, in this example, it's a uh, a timer and you have to like translate as fast as you can. Um, then there's a lesson, so you you know you can be you can read from the textbook uh, or also use a video. Um, and then there's a, an activity, um, and these tend to be like really fun and engaging. So make you, this one is uh, making an edible Roman road. We've had students put together catapults with their um, with their students. I'm sorry, volunteers put together catapults with their students. Uh, and the way this is laid out is very intuitive. And in fact, it's similar to the ways that I was taught um, by my education professors at, at college to uh, structure my lessons. Um, we also have a game appendix and songbook. Um, so, you know, if you really want to up the ante, uh, you can, you know, uh, we have games, we've got songs. Our emphasis really is to have fun. Um, and because this is an after school program, you're not gonna be getting the same um, number of kids. You might not even be getting the same kids in general. And we want this to be their first introduction to Latin. And so our emphasis is, you know, make it fun, make it light and make it, make it enjoyable. Um, I mentioned earlier also that we have uh, digital resources. So volunteers are able to sign up um, for our online courses um, through a discount. So it's completely free um, for the students, for the volunteer, I'm sorry, and for the students. Um, and yeah, you get videos, you get um, basically the, almost the same content as you would in the uh, paper textbook, but um, in like a digital format, you're also able to take quizzes. Um, it's very uh, in-depth. And I also I always recommend, um, even if you're doing an in-person site to, um, to, you know, sign up for the LMS. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide, which is a video. Um, example of some content that we have on our site. This is the tale of two civilizations, a prince, a princess, and a monster in a maze. The tale of the Minotaur. Once upon a time, there was a great civilization on the island of Crete. A king named Minos ruled there. He and his people were powerful and wealthy, but King Minos also had a shameful secret. He was responsible for a monster, a creature that was half bull and half man, called the Minotaur, who loved the taste of human flesh. All right, so, um, yeah, that's uh, an example of the curriculum and the, uh, the videos. Um, 
Uh, and isn't that a lot more fun than necessarily like reading a lesson and after school? Um, so that's another reason why I suggest using the digital resources uh, because it, it supplements the textbook and um, it's just another way of learning and letting the material stick. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh no, oh my gosh, I went too far. Uh, okay, starting a site. Um, so this part is about how to get a site, how a volunteer might um, get a site started. Um, so we have the volunteer phase. Uh, love, uh, I've got the lovely Katniss Everdeen demonstrating uh, volunteering, um, but we, we get about um, maybe a hundred, we have about a hundred uh, something volunteers uh, currently. Um, we get a lot of interested people, uh, high school students particularly, um, who, you know, have background in Latin and are interested. And so they uh, write to us and, um, you know, we consider them in our volunteer phase. Uh, then we have the next phase, which is the planning phase. So we ask uh, every student or every volunteer to um, partner with a space. So most of our sites have been uh, partnered with schools. Um, we also have some that run out of libraries, uh, community centers. And in the summer, um, we have sites that, you know, you can host a site outside. Um, this is maybe one of the trickiest bits about starting an, starting an I-Core site, um, but once you have the site secured, it's only a matter of, you know, just figuring out the logistics of this is when I want to meet, um, these are the students I want to have. Uh, we also help our, our volunteers with recruiting students. Um, I've developed a few flyers myself. Um, you know, we, we try our best to help them navigate the process of, um, of starting a site. Finally, we have the active phase and I have Wait here uh, with his site. <laughs> um, and so we consider you active once you have a start date and you've had your first meeting. Um, so during this phase, you, um, every site kind of is left to their own devices almost. Um, so if you'd like to meet two times a week, you, you have at it, have at it. Um, if you'd like to meet like three times a month, you can do that. Um, we just ask that sites, um, you know, send a log of what they're doing. Um, we ask that they provide information for our website. So if you go to our website, you can see a list of our active sites of which there are 25 currently. Um, and some things that we're thinking of, you know, expanding um, and thinking about, you know, the future is, uh, you know, doing research um, and seeing like how effective our programs are through diagnostic exams. Um, but for now, we are just content with, um, you know, having the students have fun and, uh, you know, get introduced to Latin. So I'm going to take a break from talking and I will let our um, lovely current volunteers uh, explain about their day. Do, do either of you have a preference on who like to go first? I can go first if, if that's, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Um... Okay, so as I said, I'm wait. Um, so I started one at my I started a local church and I started one at my school, and just kind of all sizes. Like it's very important to um get involved with the um with the community center that you're working at so that like you can have smooth sailing but I just really want to highlight what a day of a of Icora looks like and how it kind of runs some of the activities we do so um this is one thing I'm just Presbyterian site schools micro schools that totally like mo like multiple different um areas on um, there like they all are very different and they all have very like unique viewpoints um we like to start off with kind of an introduction um we like to make them say 
um, a name that like they we like to make them say their name and also like a piece of information about themselves or like a question that is relevant to lecture. So if we're learning about ocean or like sea themed vocabulary that day, um, we'll kind of, I'll probably say, say your name and then maybe your favorite sea animal or maybe your favorite thing in the sea. It's kind of like a little quick icebreaker. It makes everyone feel comfortable so that we have a more productive work environment. So um, after that, we like to start moving on to some of the vocabulary. I'm gonna use the example from my first meeting. Um, the first meeting that we did, um, we started off with the personal introductions and kind of like the introductory vocabulary that was included with unit one of the textbook. And um, the thing is, um, i is very versatile. It's very like dynamic. You can choose things very modular. So um, we kind of only did the first half of the vocab so we can kind of go slow since it was some of these kids first time taking the Latin course. So we would learn the vocab, go over it, and then some activities we do with that is we would um, practice saying phrases to each other. So I'd say, okay, everyone pair up with a partner so you can go back and forth and say a phrase that you just learned. So for example, I'd get one kid to say sawe, which means hello. And then I'd get another kid to say um, quid TV nomen est, which means what is your name? Um, and we get kids to kind of practice this over and over again so that they can kind of get a feel for how to use, like how to use Latin. And it also really helps to retain the information. Um, and then maybe one kid um, before the first meeting occurred asked, hey, can we like try writing a letter, try writing an email using the vocabulary that we learned? So I set up a little email activity where the kids got to apply the knowledge that they learned from the textbook and some of the introductory vocab they have and like apply it to writing an email. So then after that, um, the kids love mythology. It's so interesting. They really find stories really fun. And um, like we get to read plays that the i textbook um, provides. We also, I also play some videos kind of like the one um, that was presented earlier in this presentation. So we play that and we kind of talk a little bit about it, but that's kind of brief. Um, it's maybe like, eight to 10 minutes. So it kind of gets their minds on something more fun, really gets their focus back in because vocabulary can kind of be um, not boring, but it can be like a lot to learn at um, a very brief amount of time. So to kind of give them a little brain break, we do that and we talk about it. On our first one, um, and this is another aspect of how flexible Icora is as a program, um, we kind of started to one kid asked, hey, can we learn about Neptune? We learned about that in class. So I prepared a presentation that incorporated Neptune, which is not in the unit one of the i textbook, but since it's so flexible, we kind of worked around that and kind of interested the students. And then lastly, we learned some vocab that is themed around what we're learning that day. So we learned about ocean, that is ocean vocab that day. And that was fun um, and site. And lastly, to really get the kids engaged and interested, we play Kahoot. Kids always love Kahoot and like test to see if they've learned anything. And I'll end up, last thing is, I'll send them home with maybe a word search or I'll send them home with some coloring sheets that are related to the mythological aspects we learned that day. And that's kind of how the iCore site at my, um, at my site runs. And it's really engaging. Kids love it. And it's really a fun experience. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing, Wait, um, I love the bit about homework. I, uh, I think that's so cute and innovative. Awesome, thank you. Uh, and Abigail, can you share about your site? Hi, so um, my name's Abby and I bi-weekly host an iCore site at my local library for children ranging from fifth to seventh grade usually, but we do we do encourage other kids to come, but the predominant, like predominantly like the people are from fifth to seventh grade. And I also, as I said before, recently founded one of my middle school that I, pre that I previously attended. Um, so that one hasn't started yet, but I'm planning to start that one very soon. And um, so the reason that I chose to even create a second iCore site, because you may be wondering, like, I already have one at the library, like, why would I choose to, like, host one at, like, the middle school? And that's just because um, the library, like, geographically is, like, kind of far away from the middle school. And I just wanted, like, like, kind of like my alma mater school to, like, have, like, access to this type of, like, 
education because I think it's really important being that classics is kind of an up, underrepresented like field of study. And so I first began like just a day in the life. I first began by coming into the library and setting up the levels room, which is just the room that I book for the Icora site in my local library. And then when the students arrive, we typically begin with like classics related icebreakers just to like break the ice because um, there are often a few new students each time. So just to get them like acquainted with everyone else. And so for example, um, at our last session, the icebreaker question that I came up with was to name your favorite Greek god. And um, that was because we were learning about Greek mythology that day. And then after the new students are acquainted and we finish the icebreakers, um, we begin learning like new vocabulary terms through the i student handbook. And so the children have that. And then I, I utilize the teacher's manual for that. Um, and then so last time I utilized i textbook to read the story of Romulus and Remus because last time the students expressed interest in classical statues. And since i curriculum is very flexible, we were able to cater to the students' requests. So I had each student read a portion of the story. And when a Latin word came up, they would translate it. And the students love doing this because they're reading buffs. So they kind of just all fought over who like read the longest portion of the story, which like I thought was funny. Um, and it kind of just showed how like interested they were in like like the story. And then um, at the end of the story, I would extract all the vocabulary terms from the story and just reiterate it to them by calling on kids to reread and translate those terms. And then after that, we would watch an educational movie. And I kind of found that this YouTube creator called Magister Craft is really helpful with teaching kids classics in like a fun way. So he's just a YouTuber who built the entire city of ancient Rome on Minecraft. And I thought that was really cool. And he kind of just goes and makes YouTube videos about them and speaks about um, like ancient Rome while like navigating through a city in his Minecraft world. And my kids love that because all of them are like super interested in Minecraft. So they kind of have like their passion of classics and also Minecraft combined. So they really, really like that. And then after that, um, I would implement a Quizlet with all the vocabulary terms that we learned that day. So for the day that we learned about Romulus and Remus, I gathered all the vocabulary terms from the story and put them into a Quizlet. And then um, after that, we would go through like the Quizlet and like read all the flashcards. And um, when we were done like reading the flashcards, we would do a Quizlet Live, which is kind of similar to the Cahoots that Wait does. And because Quiz Quizlet Live and Cahoot are pretty similar. And um, we had two teams for the Quizlet Live and like they would battle against each other kind of. And like, it was super, it's a super competitive but also fun environment because the kids just like are learning classics but also like having a lot of fun doing it in a way that I feel like a school building, like aside from the fact that, it's, that many school buildings don't provide classical educations, it's just also that like it's in a much more fun way than you would typically see in like a classroom setting. And the winner of the team would receive like crowns that I pre-made, which like they were always excited about and that just kind of gave them a reason to like want to win and like try extra hard. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Abigail or Abby. Um, that was great. Your students sound super passionate and I love the bit about Minecraft. That's, that's great. Um, all right, so for the next portion, um, this will be a, a general Q&A for all of the speakers. Um, so I guess we'll just start by taking questions from the audience. Um, uh, maybe raise your hands if you guys can, can do that through the Zoom. Yeah. Abby, I mean, maybe we could stop the screen share for the uh, Q and A portion as well, so people are a little more visible. Okay. Unless Perfect. you think you need it. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I might pop it back on once we're done. Uh. All right. Um, yes. If if anyone has a question. Oh, okay. See one hand. Right. Looks like uh, Jacobus has a question. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. I, I was just, I heard a range of frequencies of meetings with the uh, groups and the students from a few times a month, three times a month, I think is what I heard, versus 
multiple times during the week. I, I'm I'm just trying to, what what do you think is optimal for? I would have thought more frequent versus just a couple times a month. Um, I would say it's it's truly up to the um, the site themselves. Our most common um, frequency of meeting is once a week, um, but you know, we don't really have, we're not very strict on, um, oh, you have to complete the textbook or you have to do this amount of lessons. Um, so it's, the ball is really in the, um, the court of, of the, of the um, site coordinator slash volunteer, if that makes sense. Um, I see another raised hand from Ashley Hiram. Hi, yes, it, it's Ashley Haram. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, <laughs> it's a hard one. Um, I I don't know if you covered this and I just missed it, but is there um, a, a good size for these classes? I mean, is it, is it something like, I mean, are they capped at a certain thing or is it just, or is it, is it perhaps just um, ideal to get as many as you can? <laughs> I mean, maybe people aren't clamoring for it to the extent that that would ever be an issue. <laughs> um, so our tip, our, I guess, ideal would be um, one volunteer to four to five students. Okay. Um, so we often, you know, sometimes we have uh, groups that are way bigger. Um, sometimes we have groups that are way smaller. Um, I know we've had maybe as small as like three students. Um, to one volunteer, then we've had, uh, on the other hand, we've had like 24 students to one volunteer. Um, so it really runs the gam, uh, the gamut. Uh, wait, how, how many do you have in your, um, in your sites? Oh. So I have two sites. Um, so at my South Baton Rouge site, which is at the church, um, we have three volunteers and we, it can range from eight to 12 people, eight to 12 students, which is a very, it's a very good amount. Um, we really enjoy it, but um, like, so that's a good. And then um, at the Dunham School, um, that site has a lot of kids. It can either range from like 18 to 20. So that has, um, that has more kids in the South Baton Rouge site. So it really just all depends, but we typically like to have three to four volunteers. And I like, I work with teachers at my school and also like some of the deacons at the church to kind of like have a, make sure to have as many volunteers and like as much support as I need. Oh, I see. Okay, great. that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I see our next question is from uh, Will Coleman. Yes, uh, could you say more about the, in, in terms of the actual content, what percentage of portions of it are in Latin and which portions are in English explanations or how that's done? The Latin English ratio. Um, I would say that the majority of the textbook is in English. Um, so technically this ICORA curriculum is a pre, um, pre-Latin. Um, so it's really designed for students to kind of get a taste of Latin. Um, so there are a few exercises as well as like the vocabulary lists and um, some of the lessons will have, you know, Latin words peppered throughout. Um, but I would say like, it's really designed for um, fourth, it's designed for fourth uh, to eighth grade students who um, are not really in a formal Latin class, uh, if that answers the question. Thank you. Um, and Andrew Garlic? Yeah, hi. I, uh, <clears throat> I actually teach Latin and Greek uh, all across the country virtually to homeschooled uh, families. Uh, and many of them have very young kids that they want to get on the, uh, the escalator. Uh, how, 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 do I, how do I license this program or how can I get a copy of what the curriculum is so I can evaluate it and then how do I you know how can I license it from you so I can use it in my schooling um I think 
If you want to use it as a formal curriculum, um, we we actually have um, a, a similar, but um, we, we, I guess we call i our freemium version versus our premium, which is Elementa, um, which is designed to be a, you know, during the day, full and like more um, introductory Latin uh, program that also has a virtual component. So I think that might be more to your, um, to your, I guess, might uh, address your needs a bit better. Um, so if you are interested in Elementa, you can um, email, you can email me and I will put you in touch uh, with um, the proper, proper person. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Um, another question for, um, from, I'm sorry, I, I see a question from uh, Beverly McCaskill. Hi. Um, so I'm a teacher at a big public school and I have a Latin honor society and I was wondering if you have had um, students like collaborating in an honor society situation for their service hours or if that would be an option like I could see setting up a site and having my students who are in the you know upper levels facilitating or being the instructors have you seen people do that before oh yeah uh I would say that's like our most uh, common, um, I guess that's a really common reason why a lot of uh, people volunteer. And in fact, we kind of advertise the, the program as like classic service learning. Um, and I think that would be an ideal situation for um, for an I-Corps site to start. Uh, you know, we have, we're looking for very talented high school volunteers who can, um, you know, use this to build upon, you know, their, you know, application for college or just their their lives in general. Um, Abigail or Abby and, and wait, do you guys are you guys in any kind of honors or do you use this as like service learning? So um, I have oh I'm sorry. <laughs> so I have a Latin club at my school. Um and so I kind of, um, since I attended Living Greek in Greece, it's a, another program offered by Pied Institute last summer. Um, that's kind of how I found out about Icora. And so um, using, so like kind of like seeing it and um, emailing back and forth miss, with Miss Aminata, I kind of brought the idea and proposed it to my Latin club. And so um, a lot of my volunteers, such as Jordan Rovius um, and my brother, like, they all are from the Latin club and yeah so that's kind of like it's not necessarily an honor society but it's like a society like for kids who do take Latin and um that's kind of how we got a lot of support and volunteering from my site seems like a no-brainer so yeah Abby did you want to add yeah for me so I also attended um Living Greek in Greece high school last summer and that's how I found out about it and um I contacted Miss Aminata to start a site and I figured out that there was already one at my Great Nick Library, so which is like my local library where I have the site. So I kind of just co-hosted that with the girl who was already doing it. And um, the way that we got more kids to do it was um, we didn't necessarily have an honor society because just my district doesn't like participate in that type of thing. Um, but we do have like a bunch of clubs. We have a Latin club at the middle school and we also have a Latin club at the high school. So. Um, and we also have a classic club as well. So for the Latin and classic clubs at the high school, we are constantly constantly trying to recruit people from there. And then for the middle school students, we're um, recruiting them from the um, classics, like class itself. And then, I mean, excuse me, the Latin class itself and then the classics club at the middle school. So we don't have like any sort of honor society, but we do have clubs for it that we recruit people from. So great. Thank Did you. That answer? Yeah, oh, perfect. I was going to ask the answer the question. Great. Um, I, I see Jason shared the uh, link for Elementa, um, if you guys are interested in, in that. Um, I'll take, yeah, one more question um, from Shirley uh, Tom. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm a high school teacher in Massachusetts. And along the same lines of uh, Beverly's question, can you incorporate this into your current Latin club structure? Um, 
What's the lead time that you would need to prepare volunteers? I'm, I might have missed this earlier in the presentation. I'm sorry, I had a class. But if you um, began this idea at the beginning of the year, would you be able to train your volunteers uh, during the school year and then run a program in the following summer? Is that a typical scenario? Uh, yeah, I th even shorter, I would say. Um you can it uh I, it doesn't really take much uh training the um like the curriculum itself is very easy to use and the teacher's manual is um uh, quite user friendly um i do offer a, a webinar um for new volunteers um every fall and spring um and i'm also willing to and i frequently do uh, have one-on-one -on -one meetings with students who are interested in um in starting their own sites so um the, the turnaround could can be very quick um so we often have students writing in maybe like the start of the month and by the like end of the month they'll have like their first date uh or first meeting okay um a corollary corollary question might be: Do do some student volunteers tend to run this in the summer as a week long program, kind of like a classic summer camp? Has that been done before? Uh, yes, uh, we actually are. Uh, uh, some of them are uh, poised to start, but we do have an ICORA summer program, and in fact, we allow um, students to apply for grants of up to a hundred dollars. Um, so that they can you know buy snacks and um, supplies um, and we we get yeah, quite a few um, students who run two to three week classics summer camps um, we encourage them to hold it outdoors and just make it really um, really fun and exciting um, so that's an option and in fact we've had some students who take their summer camp and run it um, let's say they're going to be visiting home in um, like we had a student who lived in South Korea, um, and so she went back for the summer and she ran an i summer camp from Korea. Uh, so that's cool. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I'm going to share my screen again. And uh, the last portion of our uh lecture uh ways to get involved so kind of wanted to jazz it up so you can apply um so if we have anyone who's interested in uh starting a site uh you can um fill out a form uh, on our website or email me um and apply to be a an i volunteer um although they are frequently high school students there's no age limit on um, being a volunteer, we've had college professors run i sites. We've had people who are retired run i sites. Um, so if this is something that you are interested in, um, I definitely encourage ap applying. Um, another way to get involved is to donate. Um, your donations help us, uh, you know, run the program, support students, um, and just support the work that we do in general to um, promote the classical humanities um, and uh, related to that you can uh, encourage your institution to uh, become an institutional member um, we work with high schools and university classics departments and yeah that is it for the presentation um, i realized i did not put my email in the presentation so i will uh, chat it out right now. If you have any um, lingering questions, please feel free to email me um, at hughes uh, at paideainstitute.org. Um, you can also call me at this number um, and I will be happy to answer your questions or even schedule a meeting. So uh, once again, thank you everyone for your time and um, thank you for attending the meeting. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks for coming. See you next time.